would like to start by reading you something I read two days ago. Something that shows you a little bit about Jawaharlal Nehru. This comes from his will and last testament. I have been attached to the Ganga and Yamuna rivers in Allahabad ever since my childhood. And as I have grown older, this attachment has also grown. The Ganga especially is the river of India. Beloved of her people, she has been a symbol of India's culture and civilization, ever-changing, ever-flowing, and yet ever the same Ganga. She reminds me of the snow-covered peaks and the deep valleys of the Himalayas, which I have loved so much, and of the rich and vast plains below, where my life and work have been cast. Though I have discarded much of past tradition and custom, and I am anxious that India should rid herself of all shackles that bind and constrain her, and divide her people, and suppress vast numbers of them, and prevent the free development of the body and spirit. Though I seek all this, yet I do not wish to cut myself off from that past completely. I am proud of that great inheritance that has been and is ours. And I am conscious that I too, like all of us, am a link in that unbroken chain which goes back in the dawn of history, in the immemorial past of India. It was this desire, this deep desire to become one with his country that led Nehru to ask that his ashes be scattered over the Ganga and over the fields that I spoke to you about. We'd like to welcome you to Nehru's India. Nehru himself is an ancient idea, as old as the great rivers and fields of this country, this country he loved so very much. He's an ancient idea, yes, but he's also a part of living India. His ideas and his politics are very much present here today. Even though there are those that are trying to erase him, to rub him out from history, to remove his legacy from the country he so dearly treasured and helped build. Nehru understood that there was no separation between him and India. There was no distance between him its land and nature. Indra Gandhi once wrote that her father was absolutely furious when in May 1953 he was told that Mount Everest has been conquered. He told her, Mount Everest can be climbed, but Mount Everest can never ever be conquered. Nehru saw no dis distinction between India's people and himself. Nehru tried to merge with India and India in turn merged with Nehru. 